This screencast is on specific heat and calorimeters. First, we'll talk a little bit about specific heat, how it's defined, its importance, and then a component of specific heat, which is heat or also defined as energy. Specific heat is the heat needed to raise one gram of a substance, one degree C. The capacity to gain or lose heat is generally what's thought of when we think of specific heat. It's also called heat capacity or specific heat capacity. It can be expressed as joules per gram degree C, as everything down here is, or joules per gram Kelvin. Water has a specific heat of 4.184 joules per gram degree C. Copper is quite a bit less. You see wood is in between, and then soil is quite a bit less than water as well. Why is it important? If you take a look at this skier here, your body temperature is regulated by the high specific heat of water. So it takes a long time to cool off or warm up. Another importance is our climate. If you take a look at the oceans, they act as a heat sink. The soil heats up quicker, causes hot air to rise, and it drives our general climatic cycle. A component of specific heat is heat or energy. The abbreviation is Q. It's measured in joules or calories, which are the small c, A-L. And a calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree C. So one calorie is 4.184 joules exactly. The original definition was one calorie is based on this definition. Generally, generally when you're thinking about joules and calories, one burning match releases about 250 calories or one kilojoule of heat. Also note that the calorie with the big C, which would be rare to use in this class, represents a thousand small c's or one k cal, and that is equal to 4.184 kilojoules. Let's talk about calorimeters now. And we're going to do a determination of the specific heat of copper using a calorimeter. And we'll measure the initial temperatures, the final temperatures, do some calculations, and then check our work using Wolfram Alpha. A calorimeter is actually a pretty easy instrument to understand. All it is is an insulated cup. Here's an old coffee cup, a thermometer and has water inside here. And the way we measure our water is very convenient just to weigh it. One gram of water is one milliliter or cubic centimeter of water. And we're going to determine uh, this copper um, bar here and we're going to determine a specific heat. First we'll measure the initial temperatures. All I'm going to do is take this cup, put it on the scale. I'm going to pour some boiling water in it. First, I actually preheated with water, so it was warm already. I'm going to pour some water into it. And then I'm, when I weigh it, I get 374 grams of water. And I stick a thermometer down inside. There's a little hole here. And I get its temperature. That's the initial temperature. I've already weighed this bar of copper and I already know it's approximately room temperature of my house here in Las Vegas at 22.3 degrees C. Next, we're gonna measure the final temperature. Uh, what we did is we put the copper in the cup and uh, the copper was heated up by the water and the water was cooled down by the copper. So they reach an equivalent temperature and that happens at 88.5 degrees C. 
and the heat lost was actually lost by the water and the heat gained was gained by the copper. So uh, we always refer to heat lost as negative and heat gain as positive. Let's review specific heat and what we can do with this equation, which is important. Here's specific heat. It's heat, which is Q, divided by mass, which is in grams, and the change. This little delta symbol here is change in temperature. So when we look at the specific heat units through dimensional analysis, it can be joules or calories. We'll typically use joules per gram degree C. And if we rewrite the equation, heat is equal to specific heat times mass times change in temperature. And we derive this little equation down here. And Q is equal to gram degree C times grams times the final temperature minus the initial temperature, which is the change in temperature and it works out to be heat in joules. Here's our calculations. Remember heat lost is equal to heat gained. So we look at the water, the specific heat times the mass times the change in temperature is equal to the heat of the water. Again, the key is the heat that was lost by the water is gained by the copper. So we plug in the numbers here. The specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree C. We weighed the object, uh, which is the water, and it was 374 grams. Its final temperature, which is the same for the water and the copper, is 88.5. And its initial temperature was as close as I could get it to boiling. By the time I poured it in, it was 92.7 degrees C. When we calculate this out, it turns out to be a negative number. That means it's a heat loss, which is 6,259 joules. And we simply set this equal to the heat gained by the copper. So we change the sign. That's the critical step here. We change the sign to positive. And we rewrite the equation again for copper and we're looking for specific heat. That is what we do not know. We know that the copper bar weighed 259 grams. The final temperature was 88.5, and the initial temperature was much lower. It was right around room temperature of 22.3 degrees C. And when we work it through, we get the specific heat of copper is approximately equal to 3.83 joules per gram degree C, and it's a heat gain. If we go over to Wolfram, we do a quick check, and we get the Wolfram saying that copper is 3.844 joules per gram degree C. Let's look at this problem one more time. Uh, perhaps uh, this is not as easy for you to understand. I'm going to show you a different way to do it. Uh, perhaps that will be easier. Another method of looking at this is to simply look at the heat Lost by the water is equal to heat gained by the copper. Since those two are equal, you can set the two equations equal to each other. So the specific heat times the mass times a change in temperature for the water is equal to that for the copper. You put the numbers in. The signs here work themselves out as long as you remember that one is a heat loss, one is a heat gain. So you have the negative number, negative number right here. Of the minus sign. You work out the numbers in these equations here and you get these numbers down here and you get the specific heat of the copper is again 3.83 joules per gram degree C which is a heat gain. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching this screencast.